So, most of us live in a pretty caption-free world. When we do notice them, we see them in very two-dimensional ways that, let's be honest, aren't very challenging. It's easier to say that they record sounds and put them into words, but when, we, when you think about it, you can't just record any sound. There are too many and in too many uh, different contexts. Not to mention, some sounds are rhetorically effective when captioned, while others don't add anything. You have to understand the affordances and constraints of captioning to really understand what I mean. This book, Reading Sounds, by Sean Zdenek, goes over the newest ways in which captions are being used in film and media. This specific page, written in October of 2015, is actually a supplemental website used to promote Zdenek's book. It's a summary, more or less, of the book's major topics and all of its uh, media references. He states the four... He states the four new principles of closed captioning, which are every sound cannot be closed captioned, captioners must decide which sounds are uh, significant, captioners must rhetorically invent and negotiate the meaning of the text, and lastly, captioner, or captions are interpretations. You, could, you can think of these as early definitions that he's getting out of the way and in which will apply in different contexts throughout the chapter. So every video example in this chapter is showing a different way captions can be used in films. For example, how do captioners decide which sounds are significant? How would you even know? Zidane gives an example of a dog bark being captioned in both a two, the 2009 film Extract and the 2011 NBC series Grimm. The movie has a dinner scene where the dog, somewhere outside the background, is captioned. This distracts the caption reader with unnecessary information. When done right, like in Grimm, a dog barking is captioned as important background information and is important to the action that's happening in the plot. He also mentions that gendered nature, the, the gendered nature of captioning, rather, which isn't a major problem holding back captioning, but still something to keep in mind. Using words like chattering to describe a group of women talking is simply reinforcing a stereotype that all women gossip. It's more damaging than it is rhetorical. Captions also formalize speech, which is another way of saying they, um, they use only a basic understandable language to describe sounds. You might hear a caption saying drunken slurring or said slowly, so very direct, quick speech identifiers. The problem here is that captions like this can sometimes be inaccurate or needing um, more context. It's a trade-off between accessibility and accuracy, but one that's becoming seamless over time. Captions can time shift too. They have a knack for coming either before or after whatever it is they're describing. For instance, adding a dash at the end of a sentence tells the audience, before the actual thing has happened, that something is about to interrupt. And so there goes your attention, right? In other cases, a caption might give up an entire plot when used in the wrong way. If an audience is early in the movie and isn't aware of a character's name, and that secrecy is important, what the movie is trying to do essentially, uh, a caption might come along and say something like, Gina screams. This is what Zidane coins captioned irony, a pun off of dramatic irony. The caption viewer knows important plot information way earlier than the non-captioned audience. So what I really love about Zidane's work is that, for example, with the website, he speaks in such plain English when explaining his concepts that actually I'm right there with him the entire time he's explaining it. I could be a newcomer to captioning, I could be a software employee from a big company, it's accessible to everyone. After reading this, and now that I have a good idea of how captions are and should be used, I feel confident that I can actually caption something in the future. I think this is a very great skill for anyone to have.